This was just way too short. How was it so darn short? It's like they sang two seconds and it was over. Hey fam, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Robert Anton here, robertanton.com, coming to you with your no frills, the voice commentary from a singer. Tonight, tonight, tonight is every night, isn't it? For me, it's always exciting, right? Tonight on the show, we see 12 more battle rounds with our mentors, Patty LaBelle for Team Christina, Tori Kelly for Team Adam Good, Stefani for Team Blake, and P. Diddy for Team Pharrell. We started out with Team Christina, Shalia Fearing versus Tamar Davis. They did Lady Marmalade by Patty LaBelle, and Christina told Tamar to get into character, and Patty said it's a funk machine in first rehearsal. She told the girls to enunciate the words and explain. Christina demonstrated, as did Patty. They both got a few lines in. Oh, mama, nothing like. <laughs> they were killing this in final rehearsal. And Patty said she had chills in her face. Christina wanted to work on the ending, and then all four sang the song together. It was just a great moment. Oh my God. Carson said, Let the battles begin, and it really did. They both put on the attitude and the walk and bit into those lyrics just like their coach asked them. Loved Shally as well, and then they both had some nice ad lib moments moments and really killed those harmonies. Tamar is really a serious vocalist and Shally was hanging with her all the way. I liked how they really got into their characters and that ending was tight. Pharrell stood for them and said wow and called Shalia something else and he called Tamar's jazz note amazing. Adam said Tamar had a sparkle in her eye. Blake said Shalia was unbelievable but favored Tamar because of the notes at the end and Christina chose Tamar Davis because she's been waiting a long time for it and called her a powerhouse. Then Pharrell chimed in to steal Tamar. Yes, baby, always love a win-win situation. Team Blake was next with Justin Wisnat versus Mary Smith. They did Louisiana Woman, Mississippi Man by Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. Blake told Justin to make sure to land the notes, and Gwen wanted to hear more character from him in first rehearsal. They had lots of compliments for Mary about her sound and the way she handled the material. The band rehearsal had Justin channeling Conway as far as Blake was concerned, and Gwen gave them both staging notes, things to do. This had a lot of energy and a lot of twang with some rapid fire lyrics and they both handled it really well to start. Justin's verse was clearer as I lost a few words for Mary but they had some good interactions and worked the stage well and the audience Blake stood for them. Christina called Justin accurate the whole way through and liked Mary's high notes. Pharrell called Justin's vibrato colorful and told him he's in his own lane and he liked Mary's showmanship. Adam called Justin a great singer and told Mary she took a moment to warm up but wanted to hear more from both and Blake chose Mary Sarah because he sees her as a star and no one stole Justin and I was like what really oh my god I did not believe that but if you steal me make sure to thumb up the commentary and let me know oh my goodness oh this is just so crazy thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for your thumbs team for real next at our first sighting of Sean P Diddy Combs Jessica Crosby versus Nick Hagelin they did electric feel by MGMT and I wasn't liking Nick all up in the falsetto during his first rehearsal but Diddy told them that they had to understand the pocket to understand the song Pharrell told them both to do some ad libs and the bridge and in final rehearsal took away their mic stands right away. Pharrell wanted Nick to work on his transitions and complimented Jessica on her pocket and Diddy also told them to attack it with some confidence and don't disconnect from the audience. Jessica had a nice feel as she started this out and had me vibing right along with her. Nick had worked on his falsetto production for this and it sounded better but it didn't sit perfectly in his voice. They interacted well together and were very playful but they were giving all their energy to each other a lot of the time instead of giving a lot of it to the audience. It was just okay as a duet for me and I favor Jessica. Adam called Nick magnetic and said he expected Jessica to do well. Blake was saying it took him a minute to acquire the taste for Nick's falsetto but he loves his voice and favored him. Christina said the end note shocked her and she'd give it to Nick because of that note. Pharrell chose Nick Hagelin because he worked on the things he asked him to do and delivered the energy and Adam stole Jessica. Another win win! Team Christina was up next. Chelsea Gann versus Kata Hay. They did I'm the Only One by Melissa Etheridge and their harmonies were off in the first rehearsal and Christina Christina talked to them about using the energy to put the bite in it. In band rehearsal, they were tighter, but there were some wavering notes, and Patty mentioned that it gets pitchy when it gets higher. Christina asked Chelsea to let go and Kata to have more focus and control. Chelsea got in an ooh before Kata started the verse way down in her range, and Chelsea also got a clearer section of the song to fit her voice better. She really has a big voice, but I was riveted to Kata emoting and bringing the stage presence and all of the little inflections. This was 
was just way too short. How was it so darn short? It's like they sang two seconds and it was over. Pharrell said Katie is one of those people who refuses to be ignored and Chelsea exercised her range. Adam said it felt like a battle and thought Kata is a firecracker and Chelsea was so nice. Blake kept bragging on Adam and said Kata finds her own way through a song but stays behind the pocket and preferred Chelsea. And Christina chose Kata Hay because of her energy and charisma. Team Adam was up next with Natalie Yakavazi versus Nate Butler. They did Hollow by Tori Kelly and Adam told Nate he's working too hard in first rehearsal. Tori told Natalie she could add some moments and she demonstrated what she was talking about and Adam told them both that their breath control is important for this song. In band rehearsal, Adam told Natalie she thinks too much and Tori told them the meaning of the song and why she wrote it. So I wrote, were they singing this live? I don't know. It just looked like they were lip syncing as they started out. Their voices weren't well matched to what they were doing with their mouth. Nate was really grooving to the music up there and Natalie came with everything she had to give. She had several big moments including that wonderful sustained note. She was just like standing there like holding it. I was like, go ahead old girl. And they both handled the rhythm of this very well. Blake said Natalie doesn't sound like anyone else and Nate has a pitch perfect voice. Christina said they were both really strong with a natural vibe and Adam chose Nate Butler because he was at a disadvantage and stepped up. And so okay later on throughout the rest of the stream it was all out of sync you know and, you know, and I was like what's going on? Did that happen to you guys? Do you think it was like a network thing or was it somebody at The Voice who messed up the editing? I, I have a feeling it was the actual the cable, cable network. I don't know but anyway. In the Pimp Spa tonight was Team Pharrell with P. Diddy and Hannah Houston versus Maya Smith. They did Elastic Heart by Sia and Diddy told them both not to be intimidated by the song and make it their own while they were in first rehearsal. Again, they took the stands away from them in final rehearsal and <laughs> Maya was so scared and Diddy got up close and personal with her to give her, you know, a little pep talk. Then he did the same with Hannah. Very personal coaching, which I really liked for each one. So as they started this out, they gave each other a big hug and were talking to each other's ear like kind of give each other a pep talk. And then some crazy electronic started. I was like, what is that sound? I don't know what. <laughs> I was still getting this delay, but their voices sounded great as they stalked the stage. Both really seemed to have internalized the lyrics and were bringing the drama and the vocals. The build they did together was really exciting and both came out of it even stronger. Hannah's movements were really mesmerizing. And I just keep seeing Brandy when I look at Maya, especially the braids that she had. All the coaches stood for them. Adam said Hannah's presence was amazing. Blake asked if Hannah is always so intense and focused, but said Maya seemed more more free. Christina said both of their vibrato was very solid, but they both had excitement, fire, and passion and threatened to steal one of them. So Pharrell chose Hannah Houston for this. I totally agree. And Christina chimed in to steal Maya. Then Blake followed her after she thought she had her, right? <laughs> but Maya chose Christina without even being asked who she was going to choose. She was like, ah, I choose Christina. Oh, love you, love you, love you. That is the right choice, girl. That is the commentary for the night. Tell me what you thought down in the comments. This is Robert Anton. I am out. See you next week for more of the battles. You can also check out some of my other videos. I'll have linked behind this. And if you're watching American Idol on Thursday, I'll see you then.